everybody. I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. Today I'm going to be making a delicious sopa de lentejas. Now a lot of you may know it as lentil stew. I'm also going to be adding some good sausage and some vegetables. Super easy and I think you're really going to like it. Let's get started. So these are the ingredients that I'm going to be using to make my stew. I'm going to use one cup of chopped onions, one cup of chopped celery, one cup of diced potatoes, one cup of diced carrots, two Roma tomatoes that I've already cut into pieces, one third of a yellow bell pepper, I've got one fourth of a cup of chopped parsley, one tablespoon of tomato paste, one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one teaspoon of oregano, two bay leaves, one pound of a good lean Italian sausage, and I've got one and a half cups of lentils that I already washed and I've got soaking here in hot water. And then in my molcajete, I've got three garlic cloves, three fourths of a teaspoon of cumin and half a teaspoon of peppercorns. So let's get it together. So this is the pan that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna put in some olive oil. Oh, that's about two tablespoons. And I'm gonna put in my sausage, and we're gonna brown this sausage. Now it's pretty lean, but if it releases any of the fat, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and break it up like this. So I'm grinding up my spices while my sausage is simmering over here. As you can see, look at that. It just doesn't release hardly any grease at all because it's a nice, lean sausage. So that's what you want. You don't want one with a lot of fat in it so that you don't have to be taking anything out. But if, you have, if you're going to use bacon or if you're going to use uh, ground beef or any other type of a meat, then you want to take out the fat it re releases. You don't want any grease in there. I've made this dish with bacon. I've made it with ground beef and I like it with a sausage. So my spices are already ready there. Now I'm going to add my onions. Add my onions in there like that. Stir them up. Let them release their flavor. I'm gonna add my yellow bell pepper. Now this is a really delicious hearty uh, stew because of all the ingredients that are in it. So I always, when I make this, I always make a real big pot because it freezes so good also. And then whenever you don't feel like cooking, you just get you some out of the freezer and you warm it up and it is just so perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and add my celery. Like that. And stirring this. Now I'm going to add my carrots. I'm going to let them sizzle for a little bit at the bottom as I slowly flip them around so that they can be releasing their flavor. I can see that my onions are sauteing really nicely and they're starting to crystallize. Now I'm going to add my tomatoes. I'm going to wait until my tomatoes get a little mushy because I want them to really release their juice and their taste. Now as you can see, there's a, some more liquid at the bottom. You can see that? And that's the liquid that the tomatoes are releasing. And I'm giving everything a kickstart before I add my lentils. 
And one thing I wanted to mention to you, I won't be adding the salt until the very, very last. Because you never want to add your salt when you're making lentils. You never want to add your salt right in with them. Because they can get tough on you. And they'll take longer to cook. And they won't be as soft. They'll be tough. So you want to wait on your salt. But you can use all your seasonings. But you want to wait on the salt. See the bell peppers are also releasing their flavor. Everything's coming in together really good like this. So I'm ready for the next step. I want to show you how much liquid the tomatoes and the bell peppers have released. See? And there was absolutely no liquid in there when I added my onions first. So at this time, I'm going to add my spices over here. Now when you make lentils, you want to make sure that you season very, very well. Because the, the lentils can be very bland and have absolutely no taste because that's the way the lentils are. So you need to add your seasoning in there and you need to do a good job of adding that. So you want good flavor in there, add it along with them. So since I have to add cumin and I have to add garlic and of course my peppercorns, I always grind them in the molcajete because that's how I can get that's how I can make sure that they are super fresh. But you can add the powder form. If you want to add the powder form, you can do that. And it's also good. So there are all my spices. See? See how good that looks? Now I'm going to add my potato. I've got one cup of diced potatoes. I'm going to add my tomato paste. Now I like the tomato paste in here because it adds like just a little pinch of sweetness in there that is so delicious. And it also gives your sopa a beautiful color. As you can see, there's a beautiful color in there. You see? That's what we want. And now I can add my oregano. You don't want to make lentil stew without oregano. And here's my chicken bouillon. Here's my parsley. My two bay leaves. They're very aromatic and it's gonna just give it that fantastic taste. It already smells beautiful right now. I forgot to mention that I was gonna add a little bit of cilantro. So I've got a little bit of cilantro. It's optional. If you don't like cilantro, you don't have to add any. It's just a little bit like that. Now I'm going to add my lentils. Now, I had my lentils soaking, as they are right now. See? When you cook a pot of pinto beans, it, if you soak them, it'll give you a, a kickstart, you know. So I softened them up for about an hour in some hot water. So now I'm going to add them in here. And this is a cup and a half. And you know your lentils are so nutritious. They're very high in iron, very high in folate. They're very, very nutritious, high in magnesium. If you can get your kids, if you have young children, if you can get them to eat lentils, they should be really nice and healthy. Now I'm going to add my water. This is four cups. If I need to add some more water in a little while, I'll add some more. But so far I've added four cups of water. So I'm going to go ahead and cover it up. I'm going to let it come up to a boil. But I don't want a high boil. I'm going to let it come up to a high simmer. As soon as I start seeing those bubbles, I'm going to bring it down to a very low simmer, and I'll show it to you. I can see that my stew has started a low boil, so this is a time when I'm going to bring it down to a low simmer. And I'm going to set my timer for 35 minutes, and then we'll come back in 35 minutes and see how it looks. So I've got about four minutes to go. 
before my 35 minutes are up and I wanted to show you what it looks like right now and also tell you that this would be about the time when you want to add your salt so what you want is if you feel that it needs some so I'm gonna go ahead and taste it look at how beautiful that looks so I'm gonna go ahead and taste it and see if I think that it needs any salt and I think it's absolutely perfect I don't need to add any but if you feel like it does at this time, this would be the time to do it when you've got about three or four minutes left to the end. Now, I also wanted to show you, I've got some spinach here. Now, I did mention this is one of the ingredients because I wasn't going to put it into my lentils. But I wanted to tell you that if you're on a vegetarian diet and you're not having any meat, then this lentil soup is so high in protein that... You can have it just with your vegetables and you don't have to put any meat in there. So I've got some spinach here and I wanted to show you how you can do it. This would also be the time for you to add your spinach if you want some in there. Now I know you're looking at it and you're looking at it like this is a lot, but it's going to shrivel up and literally go down to almost nothing. And I'm going to go ahead and cover it again and leave it like that for the remaining two minutes. So my timer just went off. I'm going to go ahead and remove it off the heat. And I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to let it sit here for just a little bit before I serve myself because it's very, very hot. So my sopa de lentejas has been sitting here for about three minutes. Now I'm going to go ahead and serve myself. It's still nice and hot. And you see, you see what happened to the spinach? See, it just shriveled up just so perfect. And you know what? You can take out your, your bay leaves. You don't need them in there anymore. Mm. Mm. I wanted to tell you that this bread that I have right here is some home-baked bread that I made uh, about two weeks ago. And I had it in the freezer. And I went ahead and took it out last night and I let it thaw. And then today I just, then today I just sliced it and toasted it in the oven. So I have made a video on home baked bread. I'm going to go ahead and put the link below. So if you want to see how I made this bread, you'll see the link below. So what I do is I get me a piece of the toast and I'll just put it in like this. So you, you can have it with anything that you want. Now for the taste test. So I like to get my toast and I like to just dip it in there and get it nice and wet. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. This is so delicious. Mmm. So good. This is my sopa de lentejas. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Send me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you haven't subscribed, this would be a good time for you to do it. And don't forget to share. Thank you. Mmm.